a simple thing. Let's get to see if we can be afforded authority to enforce what the people out there are desirous of us to do. When do you expect the, the results uh, of this uh, conference this morning to come out and action actually taken? Well, now that's something you can't answer. Uh, we're only hopeful that we didn't ask for any procrastination on the subject. We want it done as quickly as possible. With the passing of the uh, of the vote, more or less two to one, where does it go from here? Well, we've uh, passed the results on to uh, Chief Don Bird, uh, and he is in communication with our uniform committee. Uh, our uniform committee has uh, secured some samples, and uh, they were uh, very attractive. Uh, our plainclothes men looked at them and. Uh, I'm sure that that had something to do with the way that the uh, vote came out. But uh, the Uniform Committee, uh, which is headed up by Director Fulgham, will be uh, in session several times to discuss the uh, pros, cons, the cost, and, and uh, it, it's, not, it's certainly not something that we will do tomorrow or the next day. It, it would, uh, just supplying these things would take months and months. Uh, even if we had the uh, approval of everybody along the line. We'd like to get every citizen not only in Fort Worth, but we'd like the 200 million to write these letters and to write them to the President of Hanoi requesting or demanding is what I would like to see, the release of these men who are no longer of any military value to the North Vietnamese. Fort Worth has been chosen as the model city for this. And uh, it looks like we're off to a great start with all of you people here this morning. Uh, hopefully, uh, Karen is saying if it goes well here, this is going to be carried nationwide, and we think it will be. It's going to be conducted for the next three weeks, and uh, hopefully we're going to see a lot in the newspapers. We're going to hear a lot of talk about it, and uh, Paul and Michelle and I are going to be carrying a lot of mail from that post office. <laughs> and uh, again, I said the purpose of it is to obtain the release of these men. This is the only way that uh, I feel we're going to, re to obtain this release. Robert, you bring in beautiful color to the 1970 Miss Texas pageant. How do you feel about it? I think it's going to be a wonderful experience for me being the first black and for the rest of the blacks that will come in years to come. Did you ever dream of something like this when you were a little bitty girl in pigtails? <laughs> I don't think that I've ever missed a Miss America pageant or a Miss Universe pageant. And I used to sit back and think, you know, I'm a good miss. I sure would like to be a beauty queen. But I never thought that blacks would really be in there like we are now. Other than such a uh, tantalizing statistics that you bring in here, 36, 24, 36, uh, what other contributions can you make to the, uh, to the people of Texas? Well, I'm going to do a Polynesian dance for my town. It's a little unique, a lot different from what you generally see on pageants. And the interview is going to be scheduled for the contestants, too, and I hope that I'll maintain my own in that. And that's one of your hobbies, or Hawaiian-type dancing? Yes, I do creative dancing. I've never had any special training done. Okay. 
Well, of course, the free world hasn't sent someone uh, yet, but I think someday uh, our nation will have a woman in space. Do you have that ambition? If I had the college requirements and uh, would still be within the uh, age requirement by the time they do it, yes, I'd be delighted. <laughs> How about commercial airline pilots? Why aren't there any women commercial pilots? Well, again, there are uh, two or three women airline pilots in the free world and several in Russia. However, uh, uh, our country is not, uh, the major airlines have not accepted women yet. I think that'll happen, though. What does it take? To take to be an airline pilot or to get women accepted? <laughs> to, be, to, take, to get women accepted. I think someone, uh, all it would really take would be someone who would uh, pursue it actively. I think they could do it under the Fair Employment Law. I think they'd have to let them. Aviation is one of the few fields that women aren't jokingly referred to as, as uh, lightheaded in. Why do you think that is? Why aviation in particular? Well, I think when a gal earns the same rating, takes the same test, displays the same proficiency that a fellow does, uh, she earns the respect right along with a pilot certificate. Are you a feminist yourself? No, I really couldn't be called a feminist, I don't think. Well, what about competition with men? What are your thoughts on that? Well, I've flown in the mixed races. They're a lot of fun. In fact, they're more fun sometimes than the women's races. Why? Because there's men. <laughs> What is your specific request or recommendation to the city? What do you want them to do of the SCLC? Well, it's a pleasant coincidence, uh, and we are certainly uh, pleased to see that other citizens of the community have similar interests. Uh, who initiated this? Uh, how, did, how did this happen, both of you, at the same afternoon on the same subject? Well, the NAACP responds uh, wherever possible to uh, written, signed, notarized complaints from citizens. And of course, to this end, we are responding to uh, a complaint registered in our office. It just so happened that it was simultaneous, I assume, uh, with the interests of other people in the community. Are what these new conditions, or have they always been like this in Dallas? We feel that these conditions have existed uh, in areas of the community over a period of time. Where did you go? Uh, who did you talk to? as a representative of the NAACP before coming here to the city? Before coming yeah. to the city yeah. council? Did you talk to landlords, property owners? Uh, and if so, what kind of reception have you had from them? Uh, members of our organization have talked to uh, representatives, uh, and in some instances, landlords yeah. by phone who refuse to uh, carry the conversation beyond the initial information of stating the purpose and this was the closing of the conversation, so we had no recourse. We could not pursue that course of action any longer when they refused to talk. Is this true of many landlords? Several of those that we named, yes. Did you consult with the Urban Rehabilitation Department before coming to council? The Urban Rehabilitation uh, uh, Department has been consulted, uh, and specifically by one of the complainants, uh, who happened to be one of our members also. Did they make any questions? They went to the area. Did you not get satisfaction from them, though? There was no satisfaction given the tenants. Are you satisfied? Rubbish, trash, uh, holes in walls and ceilings, uh, electrical hazards. Uh, we have balconies that are set so far apart. Landlords allow children to come into apartments, live on second floors, and the balconies are set so far apart that the kids can easily fall through. Well, we would like to see the city uh, implement some of the codes on the uh, books uh, where they have city ordinances regarding. Uh, uh, the health and welfare of uh, citizens in the community, the building codes uh, relating to the construction of multi-dwelling complexes. We would like to see it rigidly enforced. I can't get the men out. Money won't get the men out. The federal government can't get the men out. 
Only the American people can bring these men back home. And I guess really it's Fisher cut bait time in terms of whether or not my statement was true to the North Vietnamese. Then in America, 200 million people will become concerned about one person in need, much less 1,500.